How's it going, everybody? You're joining a rather bedazzled Rosine here today, September the 1st, Tuesday night. Probably September the 2nd, Wednesday morning right now. Um, the clear sky forecast said it was going to be cloudy all night and indeed for the rest of the week, like it has been for the last six weeks or something like that. But it started clearing up. So I took my chance and set up both rigs. And by both, I mean uh, the CEM70 I've been given to loan. We're not talking about that today. Today I'm talking about the Stellar Lyra 8 inch classic Casa Green, which is mounted currently on my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. I'm doing some planetary with it. Uh, so Mars at the minute for my garden is in a really good position, rising in the east. I've got actually got a view on it before it gets behind the house. For example, the Moon, Saturn and Jupiter, I can't see at the moment. I need to wait a bit longer before I can actually image those. But yeah, the Stellar Lyra 8 inch is an F12 um, telescope. That's, what was that, 2,400 millimeters or something like that, 2,800? It's deep. And I've had this for a while now, and really I've only been able to get around to using it now. Uh, it's a planetary scope, as you might be able to imagine, at that focal length. I'm using the SV Bonnie 105 eyepiece because the ASI 120mm is in use as a guide camera at the moment. So that's where I'm at the minute. If I sound like I'm cold, it's because I am. It's gone to midnight. I've been outside for three hours. I should really go and get a t-shirt, but I'm too much in the zone. I've been running around between two rigs, setting everything up, and now I'm finally getting around to film a video. So we'll go and join. We'll go out to the telescope in a moment and we'll look at what Sharp Cap is doing. Enough babbling in the shed. I mean, this is the shed. Uh, my girlfriend's in the living room at the bit playing Hellblade to do a sacrifice and I don't really want to just barge on in there and be like, sorry love, I'm trying to film a video. So yeah, um, I mean to be honest though, the shed's quite nice actually, it's a nice little recording studio. Anyway, let's get out to the telescope, that's what you're here for, right? So this is the back a bit. The Stellar Lyra comes as standard with these three really nice aluminium um, extensions here and I've kind of noticed that they're required to get focus with a DSLR and kind of the same with a any kind of camera. The focuser is out here at like four and a half centimeters plus a bit of an extension uh, there's a small extension tube on the camera itself all this just to reach in the back focus I mean I do need to refocus the camera so it does need to rack in a bit Somewhere around that, somewhere around there. Yeah, so really straightforward setup here. If I had a diagonal, I'd probably end up using that, but I've since given my NPE diagonal back. Uh, I say my NPE diagonal, their NPE diagonal back. But really fascinating. One thing I'm struggling is actually getting any color to show in Mars, which is something I wasn't anticipating considering you can quite easily see the red glow of Mars just with your eyes. So that was definitely something I wasn't expecting. I'll show the screen at the minute. I've just got the laptop down there on um on my extension reel because everything else is over in use over there. I'm trying to get a good focus here. So I'm gonna change the zoom. Hey, where's Mars going? I feel like if I don't take up some slack in the gears, I'd like some drift. That's what we're looking at at the minute. I mean, I did collimate this, but I think the collimation is still slightly out. Yeah, looks like the collimation is still slightly out. That's also not going to be doing me any feel like that's probably some of the better focus I'm going to get. I think um, focus. Yeah, sharp cap, sharp cap has a focus assistant. And I believe what I do is put that there. And I can address the focus. not happy is it yeah see how now it's getting bigger so I'll pull this down wait now about 
37 millimeters. It's 0.76. I think that's the best I'm going to get. I'm just going to lock that now. One thing I learned from when I reviewed this camera is I can I can go a lot shorter exposure. Um, then it gives me, I just need to type it in here. So let's go seven milliseconds. Okay, with a minimum of 7.8. And that's, still feels like it's, like I can't get any cover. It might be very obvious, but I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. I feel like I can see some surface details. I do feel like I can see some. So I think, I think I'm gonna err on the caution and underexpose it. It definitely looks like I can see something. So right now I'm just gonna get a quick capture and I don't know, 1000 frames, 2000 frames. Oh, I clicked 1000, so. Um, oh, well, I've made the bed. I'm gonna lie on it now. Oh, bed sounds like a good idea, what is it? 20 past the midnight. Oh, I'm still early. Planetary is something I've been very interested in. It's a very different set of skills as deep sky astrophotography. And um, I, I believe some people might think that planetary is easier than deep sky. You don't need to guide and like less things like that. But it definitely has a very, I think it has a very high bar to entry. Even just trying to focus sometimes can be difficult, making sure your settings are right. I mean, the SV-105 probably isn't the best eyepiece, telescope, camera. The best camera to use in this application, but it's the only one I have. Maybe I'll get a 120 color or something like that, but I'm finding Planetary has a very different set of skills required at the moment. Deep Sky, yeah, I'm, I feel pretty comfortable and confident with that, but Planetary, man, Right, it is 25 to 1. Still haven't put a jumper on. It's beginning to get cloudy now. Um, I really don't think, once these clouds come in, I don't think I'm gonna, gonna have a second chance. So, well, this would be a third chance. Yeah, so um, if these clouds take root, then that's gonna be it. I'll pack up. To be honest, I'm probably gonna pack up the, the imaging, the um, planetary rig now anyway because I just want to stagger my breakdown tonight. Be interesting to see if I actually have a planetary photo of this. Let's cross my fingers that I don't actually delete these ones as well, or else I'm just going to give up taking planetary video, planetary pictures altogether. I feel like I'm beginning to ramble now, probably because I'm so cold. So jumpers are a thing, as are coats. If you're going to take anything away from this video, it'll be that. I think it's maybe about 10 degrees out. People are going to laugh at me, but... I'm British and we'll moan about any other any weather. Thanks very much for watching everybody. Hope you've had clear skies or at least had some more luck than us Britons lately. Yeah. Whatever projects you're doing at the minute, whether it's lunar, deep sky, planetary. Give me some hints for planetary, please. I know I have the Damien Peach video, but you know, he's at the top of his game. What kind of hints can you give me wherever you are in your journey? They will be really appreciated especially when it comes to testing these big telescopes. So thanks very much for watching everybody. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up and keep them cameras clicking. See you later. <sighs> oh, that spider.